Yesterday, I called on the CEO of Norfolk Southern, Alan Shaw, to testify before the Senate regarding the horrific derailment in East Palestine. We, he has not said yes yet. We are renewing our plea. Mr. Shaw, you have an obligation, obligation, after what happened to testify before the Senate. The accident was awful, devastating to the community, worst of all, preventable, according to the NTSB. But just don't take the NTSB's word for it. We all knew. For years, Democrats have pushed and even successfully secured stronger safety standards for rail around the country. But rail companies spent years pushing the federal government, particularly the Trump administration, to repeal the safety standards intended to prevent accidents like the one that happened in Ohio. Was Norfolk Southern advocating for these rollbacks? What, of course they were. Why, after, after, after um, reporting over $3 billion in profit last year, did they lay off thousands of workers in the same year? $3 billion of profits and worker layoffs all at the same time? More pointedly, why would Norfolk Southern launch a $10 billion, $10 billion stock buyback last year when they could have and clearly should have used that money to upgrade safety equipment? So again, I'm calling on him to testify, Alan Sh Mr. Shaw, as soon as possible. Norfolk Southern, you've broken your trust with the American people. The American people, and of course the people of East Palestine, deserve answers. On student debt, lastly, today oral arguments will begin on President Biden's student debt relief plan, a plan that is nothing, nothing short of a lifeline for tens of millions of Americans, giving them a new lease on life. Now, Republicans talk a big game about helping working people, but today's case, pushed by Republicans who oppose student debt relief, is a slap in the face to working Americans across the country. Let me be clear. Ninety percent of the relief going out, going to out-of-town borrowers, out-of-school, sorry, ninety percent of the relief going to out-of-school borrowers will go to those earning less than $75,000 a year. This is not some giveaway to the rich. That's utter bull put together by Republicans who don't want to help students. It's not a handout to the wealthy. It's critical relief to working and middle class families. For generations, higher education was the ladder up. Every one of our families, mine, prized sending their kids to college, especially now for millions of black, Latino, and Asian Americans. But over the years, the student debt that comes alongside a college degree has created not a ladder up, but an anchor weighing down Americans, making it harder to buy a house, start a car, start a family, move jobs. In other words, the burden of student debt has made it harder for Americans to achieve the American dream. That's what's at stake before the Supreme Court. Not just the chance to relieve the crushing weight of student debt for millions of Americans, but the definition of the American dream is on the line today. And wrapping it up, so, all, all this to say, the Senate's back. Here we are. I landed from Israel Saturday night. Sunday morning, I was opening up the brand new Long Island Railroad East Side Access in New York City. Went to a swearing in in Brooklyn, a WTC memorial, and the next day I got on the plane, went up to Buffalo and Rochester. Here we are. We're keeping the momentum going into this week and this work period with energy, determination, purpose. Senator Durbin.